G'day to you. You're probably watching this part of the um, Lunch and Learn, uh, which is a replay of a video. We're going to be talking about modern entrepreneurship. So if you're watching this section, please type in the number two, because then that would let us know, um, you know, wh wh which part you joined us from. So today we're going to be talking about what I actually learned in the past um, month while creating yet another uh, part of my business and how that can also help you be do and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable so while we're waiting for the people to start the live part of this show I'd really like to know that you might be thinking to yourself is this guy worth my attention and time and I'm just gonna say to a lot of you the answer is going to be no. You know why? Because I can't help you get rich quick. I do not like MLM and I do not. And if you don't like advertising or any of that stuff, you're not going to enjoy my stuff. And if you don't work hard, you're not going to enjoy any of my stuff. So I see the live part of this show has just started and I see Steve Thompson is in here. Steve, my brother, how are you doing? Uh, hope you've been fantastic and you've been looking after the girls there. Thank you so much, and um, I really appreciate the support, my man. Thank you so much for that. Um, if ever there's anything I can do for you, let a brother know, all right? So while everybody else is jumping on, I just really want you to also understand that I do viscerally believe that if you're running an online business, it should be profitable and you should actually enjoy working in it. And I actually believe that, um, you know, you should also be creating for and relating to the audience you're going to be uh, demanding money off of. So today's topic is, is one of those, um, you know, ones that you might decide, mm, is it worth watching and listening to? But it's actually, um, you know, jam packed with practical tips and also things that you too can actually start doing within your business, um, especially if you're starting out or if even if you're not yet quite seasoned, all right? So the reason why I do that every single day is because I want to teach you my four-step uh, system that has helped me uh, create a six-figure business that I'm proud, um, you know, to share with every single day where I help you find the right kind of leads within your business, uh, create the right kind of content for them, convert those customers, and actually connect with them. So the part that we're going to be talking about today is literally the stuff you probably never find in a course, never find in a textbook, and um, stuff that you actually need to know, especially if you are just starting out all right so while we're waiting for everybody else to tune in can you just define for me what your description or definition of entrepreneurship is what do you think when you hear the words entrepreneur can you just type it in the comments there and let me know so that i have an understanding of you know, if, if the information I'm going to be imparting onto you is important or it's something that, you know, you, you might not have a clear understanding of. So can you just let me know in the comment section there what your definition of entrepreneurship is? All right. So while we're waiting for everybody else to tune in and sit in, grab a chair or a coffee or whatever is tickling their fancy this lunchtime, I'm just really going to be, um, you know, appreciating everybody that's tuning in right now and, um, you know, letting you know that at the end of the day, it's not easy, all right? Everybody else might just so make it sound like you have to do X, Y, and Z, and at the other end of, you know, the production line, there is a box, which is now your business. Every part matters. Everything you do matters. And, um, you know, while you, where we're going through all of this today, the actual word entrepreneur, it holds more meaning than ever before. Before entrepreneurs were people like Henry Ford who had like a big industry or a big factory where he employed thousands and thousands of people and um, you know what I mean and, 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 and you know was the life source for everybody else's um, you know happier existence but in today's world you know if you can have a vision if you have a couple of goals if you have a message that can go to a particular market and people are willing and able to pay for that time for those services for that product you can actually be an entrepreneur and for some people it might imply maybe running a multi-million dollar company 
Let me hear what Rob, Jim Bob says. Hey, how are you doing, by the way? Entrepreneur from the French word means entreprendre. Exactly. Between plus take. You to begin to undertake. Well, absolutely, man. Um, and and with the way language morphs and the way language changes, um, it has now you know, taking its own livelihood in as much as um, people now explain it according to their own personal, I mean, um, perspective and personal view to it. So some people think uh, being an entrepreneur is running a multi-million dollar company. For others, modern entrepreneurship is just really about the relationships that they've built and actually living a life they've dreamt of and also through their own means. Now, you know, it's, 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 it's very difficult for you to find a medium in, in describing it because everybody has their own perception of what it should look like, what it feels like, what it smells like, and who it should be. You know what I mean? So, I mean, taking it on a personal note, um, if you come to me four, three to four years ago and, um, you know, and, and told me, yeah, Prosper, you're probably going to be one of, um, you know, the most sought after entrepreneurs. I would have looked at you and be like, ah, what do you actually mean? Cause I couldn't have dreamt of calling myself an entrepreneur then. You know what I mean? Um, the entrepreneur I knew was Mark Zuckerberg who came up with a billion dollar, you know, listed company, people that created Twitter, people that created Uber and all that stuff. You know what I mean? And, and um, let alone, if you really look at it, um, now I speak at gigs, you know, now I have all these exciting um, freelance projects, which I suppose you have too, you know what I mean? And all I had was pretty much a backpack full of hopes and dreams that I came with to Australia seven years ago, a lot of blind ambition that was strong enough, um, you know, uh, to make me overcome whatever fears I had at that particular time of maybe going back to a job while I had my daughter and I didn't know what was going to be the future of us. And, um, and, and you, you know what I mean? It's, it's all those things that were playing against, um, you know, the, the person I was then to the person I now am. And I, I believe a lot of people are going through that, um, you know, that, that predicament. And then if you fast forward the, the three years or the four years, now I've established this digital marketing agency. I've established a couple of websites that are actually helping other businesses to be profitable and enjoyable. I've got, um, um, I've got a healthy audience. I've got, um, you know, I've got two shows that I run, one of which is the one that you're watching, the Lunch and Learn, this one here. And I've got first rate, um, you know, consulting projects. I wouldn't have thought this would have been possible. And maybe if you look at what you've achieved yourself right now, you would start noticing you, you now have clients you never dreamt of. You probably are helping people that you never thought you would meet in your, in your life. That's exactly what entrepreneurship is. You know what I mean? Creating something that never existed and putting your name and your own definition and perspective to it. Do you know what I mean? And um, I mean, obviously, if um, if you would have known me the last three or four years, I, I hate to brag, but I just really want to show you that a whole lot can happen if you choose to delay gratification. A lot of people fail in business because they want instant gratification. They want everything to start happening now instead of actually letting it, you know, play its own course and actually um, be doing, have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. For me, for me, I wouldn't want to lie. And as you can see, the path to success and to what I now have has been paved by a lot of trial and error. And I'm going to be elaborating about it, you know, in, in, the, in the show as we go on. And in the first um, 33 years of my life, this is what I think modern entrepreneurship is now, um, you know, is, is now, um, you know, defined as it's no longer factories. It's no longer having, um, you know, 5,000 employees because everything can be created by an app. Everything can now be, um, you know, done over your mobile phone. So this poses a big challenge to those people that still haven't grasped the fundamentals of what business really is and also the the, the whole um you know morphication or difference that's now happening in the world that we are living today first of all back in the days you needed 
thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of money, capital, investors, for you to establish a factory, for you to establish the equipment, for you to pay your, your, your servants maybe six months in advance before you start making a profit uh, within your business. But these days, if you've got hopes, if you've got determination, um, you know, and a laptop and, and the will to actually put something and create something out there, you do not need any capital to get started. You know, you do not need any capital to get started. And more important than any investment, you know, there are two things no money can actually buy. Ambition and determination. Do you know what I mean? Those two things are the things that anybody who wants to start anything, whether it's um, it's it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, Airbnb, whether it's an Uber, whether it's whatever type of business you're going to be starting, or maybe it's a non-profit, if you don't have the ambition or the determination to see that thing through, it's probably not going to see the light of day. So, what I really have realized is as you begin your journey as a, as a, as a startup or as an entrepreneur, you're going to have loads of um, downfalls and a lot of setbacks. And that's going to happen because that's life. Nothing is set in stone. But those setbacks are designed for you to leave, learn, and then contribute a little bit later on. Because every fallback or every setback is going to be a lesson and there's going to be highs and there's going to be lows and that's the whole fun of it because if you're not going to enjoy the journey then what's the purpose of you just um you know having the end product i don't think there's funny in that you know um it's just like if you're trained to be an astronaut and then you go straight to the moon do you think going to disney is going to be an exciting um you know adventure for you i don't think so because you've done the ultimate the highest of everything else that's possible. So I think everybody gets into it because of the journey, because of the determination they have and the, um, you know, the, 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 the ambition they actually have to have something that is worthwhile, something that is remarkable and people can actually talk about a little bit later on, you know? So there's going to be hard times, obviously. And during the hardest of times, it takes a lot of persistence. You know, and, and I don't think a lot of people have that in them these days at all because we now just want everything done instantly. And guess what that is doing to, 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 to a lot of businesses? You become a statistic. Do you know what I mean? If you don't have the persistence to actually push through it and to believe that it, it will all come together at some point, most of the things that we work, work towards will just crumble just because we are not patient enough. We are not persistent enough to see it through. You know, when I, when I first decided to take the leap and switch from, you know, the secure full-time job that I had, um, you know, and, and, and go into freelancing and actually start the, the, the digital marketing business, I, it was not easy. We had just gotten the little baby. Um, we had just moved into a new property and, you know, I lost everything that I literally had built up in the three years that I'd been in Australia. And I did not know where the next dollar was going to come from. I did not know where the next customer was going to come from. You know, the way I actually survived the first months, you know, first of all, with no business, no work, was just by keeping myself learning. I learned all that I could learn so that when the time came to execute, I had the idea of how to do it. Do you know what I mean? And I kept building, you know, because that persistence kept me going. That, that um, zeal kept me wanting more. And eventually the business started getting noticed. The videos that I was doing started getting noticed. I used to run a show that, you know, spanned for a minute. It was called Prosper in a Minute. It, it was both aggravating and, you know... Uh, funny at the same time because I was anticipating that people would love it but nobody nobody knew who I was so it was difficult for people to just jump on board you know but I persisted and I kept going you know but now you know I get work calling me from whatever direction and it's fun to see the difference that two years or three years can actually make if you are patient enough and if you're um, persistent enough to go towards what your goals are do you know what I mean so Half of the time, it's if you have a certain threshold of some sort of intelligence, you know, what matters most is the perseverance and the ability to understand that nothing is just going to happen just because you want it to happen. And you have to accept all those 
For you to have highs, you have to have lows. There's yin, there's yang. We live in a world of duality, you know? And if you're really, really confident with your plan, and if you put your heart and soul into it, the money will follow. And I wish a lot of people would understand that right from the get-go, just so that they don't become a statistic of being the 80% that don't make it past the first year, second year, or the fifth year in business. Because I think the hardest part is really motivating yourself. And while you are receiving no positive feedback, because if people are not buying from you, that's feedback. If people are not watching your videos, that's feedback. Do you know what I mean? And if that feedback is not positive and your self-esteem is not strong enough within yourself to say, you know what, I want this to mean something in the first couple of months or the first, you know, um, years to come, guess what's going to happen? You will crumble and fall. It's, it's not going to work as much as you want it to. So you want to get through all this hardship and you want to keep reminding yourself that, you know, you, you know, you, you're doing the best you possibly can. And you're only letting people understand where you're going by being the visionary, because what you're creating never existed in the world. And you only have to just rely on your ambition to make it through. You're not going to have to expect a pat on the back because, yeah, everybody else is busy living their own lives. Good day, Taff, my friend. How's it going? And uh, sorry I missed your call. Hey, I was too busy in the morning, but yeah, let's catch up maybe uh, my four or something like that, yeah? You know? So, yeah, it's just modern entrepreneurship that I'm talking about, Taff, and how it's so different to, you know, how our parents would have envisioned it, how, Hen you know, Henry Ford would have started his industrial revolution. These days, all you really need is grit, all you really need is putting in the work and all you really need is knowing what to do, when to do and relax. Don't anticipate. Oh, don't put your, your, your best foot. I mean, what do you call it? Don't always go in for instant gratification. You know, because half of the time I want to tell you something. If you're not trying anything, you're actually missing out because right now you've got. You don't have anything to lose. Why are you not reaching out to your prospects that are, that, that are supposed to be paying you money? Half of us are, you know, crippled with fear and, 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 and we are just afraid that maybe some people don't see us as the entrepreneur we're supposed to be. Let me tell you something. Everybody else is also sitting in their house afraid. So what's happening now? He's afraid to reach out. You're afraid to reach out. Now there's a miscommunication in between, you know? Have you ever feared to hit the send button on a maybe life-changing email or, or picking up the phone to, to call somebody on a, on a, on a, on a, to, to, to have a life-changing um, you know, phone call or reach out to pot uh, you know, a potential mentor or potential um, consultant that has the answers to what you could be going through? Because especially when you're starting, you might feel like your, your self-confidence is not going to pull you through. You know what I mean? Your, your self-confidence is not, um, you, you feel like you are, you, you are not worthy of other people's attention. You know? And, and then most actions, like I've just said, um, you know, about, you know, sending an email might, might be very intimidating for other people. Even commenting on, on, a, on, a, on a live feed like this is very intimidating for others because you're probably asking yourself, how does he speak like that? How, do I, how am I going to be able to do the same? Is, is that what in, in, you know, entrepreneurship is all about? You know, Define what it means to you and then once you can stand up inside of yourself, you've got it good. And, John, and Jim says, uh, fear has killed many a project before it's even begun. Can you imagine how many... Things would not be possible if the creator just was almost about to do it and then they were afraid. Can you imagine if Steve Jobs was afraid to put out the, the iMac? Can you, can you imagine if Bill Gates was afraid uh, and had fear and was afraid that people were not going to buy the Microsoft uh, software? You know, what really, really matters is having enough courage to actually execute on those things. And, and it has to be right now because you've got nothing to lose. Nobody knows you. Nobody cares right now. So you've got all the time to break whatever you can before it's solid, before you are a big enough company where if you do anything, the, the public, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, notices. So this is when you use, um, I think Mark Zuckerberg, he always says, break things fast. I mean, act fast and break things. 
Because as you take those risks, as, as, it, as it goes along, this is what all modern entrepreneurship is all about. The best part about it is you can always hit reset, you can always rebrand. Back in the time, you couldn't rebrand because you were working in a small community. Right now, if you start your business in a, in, a, in a different niche, and if it doesn't stick, you could always go in, start brand new in a totally different niche, and nobody would even know how much you executed in the other place there. So stop letting fear you know, you stop you dead in your tracks and not executing because you're afraid of what people would think. Nobody cares. Nobody is seeing. You know? And then as you take these risks and you actually start doing, um, you know, your stuff, they will actually start paying you back generously. And you gradually learn, um, you gradually learn that people that actually matter are people that are actually friendly and supportive. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of that statement. Uh, what does it say that um, mind over matter is it? Those that matter... Uh, don't mind and those that don't uh matter mind something like that if somebody knows what i'm trying to say can you type it in there because if you ask people that are actually established and people that are successful for some help guess what they will actually respond you know favorably they'll give you guidance they'll give you support you know and then we're always afraid to reach out to people when other people are actually waiting on the other side to contribute their value and their knowledge and, um, you know, to actually be of use to society. So don't be afraid to reach out to people if you think you need help. But then this doesn't mean that you should now expect everybody to stop whatever they're doing, you know what I mean, and, and put your request first. Be polite. And if you reach out to these people, you know, give them time to respond. And whenever you ask a person for help, you know, be clear on the why you want them to help you. And once you're clear on that, obviously, who wants to be a douchebag? People are more than happy to help you out. So don't even be, um, don't, don't even, um, you know, feel embarrassed to reach out to people, especially those people that you think um, um, are going to be helpful to you. Now, Tav says, fear is the bridge that must be crossed to get to Success Island. Absolutely. And no one gets to the island except through that bridge. And once you go over that false evidence appearing real, it becomes, you, you start laughing at, at yourself because some of the things that you, you are afraid of are nothing. Up until you cross that bridge, like what Taff is saying. And you know what? The, the, the good thing about modern entrepreneurship is while you're starting out or while you're young, you don't have a lot to lose at all. Most of the time, the greatest enemy that's actually stopping us, like what everybody's saying, is the fear of failure. You know? It's the fear of failure. What's the worst that could happen? What is the worst that could actually happen? And Jim Bob says, uh, those who mind don't matter and those who mind, uh, who matter don't mind. Well, absolutely. That's uh, the statement I was going on about. Because you will notice that people that actually are going to pay you money are people that actually want to support your business. Because the more you're in business, the more value they're going to be getting from you. So they are more than happy to give you referrals. They're more than happy to give you pointers as to how to get better. So the more you cocoon yourself... You're never going to be a butterfly because it's only butterflies that are admired. Caterpillars are eaten by birds. Yeah. So, you know, by looking at whatever anxieties you might have from a vantage point of what was the worst that could happen, you'll be able to eliminate whatever artificial worries you might have. And you can actually start taking those bold steps and, and, and they'll lead you towards the wider success. Especially what Taf has mentioned, that you need that bridge to get to the island. And without you conquering your fears or standing up within yourself, it's never going to happen. And the last thing that I feel like with modern entrepreneurship that you really need to look at is you got to put yourself out there. I always say this, nobody's going to come and knock on your house's door because becoming recognized in any industry, in any particular industry, it's not going to happen while you're waiting for the world to discover you. It's not going to be people that are going to be tripping, stumbling and falling, you know, just to come and see what new um, blog you wrote out or what video you put out or what new products you've got. Do you know what I mean? Don't wait for the world to discover you. 
Go out to them. Figure out how can you be of much help. Listen to what's actually happening on the ground and create products and services that they actually need so that they will now start looking for you. You know, you have to make the world see you. Right now, we've got three people watching at, at this particular moment. I'm not worried about that. You know why? Because everybody else is busy. It actually makes me happy because they will then watch this in post-production and realize what they could have enjoyed. You know? But first of all, you have to raise yourself out of your comfort zone. And you know what? In my experience, there, there was people that I used to look up to. And now those people are now starting to contact me for me to help them out with their own products. But only if you actually, first of all, raise yourself to their level and beyond. So all those people that you're afraid to ask for help, if you put yourself out there, would definitely be coming through and asking for help from you. Now, Tav says the million dollar question is, how do we constantly and systematically conquer our fears? Now, this is something that... Something that has to happen within yourself. And um, this is something that I constantly do. First of all, if you've got goals that are big enough, you know what I mean? They, because we think in duality, we've got a logical mind and an emotional mind. And if you've got a vision of where you want to be, if you've got a vision of what it looks like, and if you've got a vision of what you don't want, you definitely ignore everything else that gives you instant gratification because also giving up is instant gratification because you don't want to keep holding on to something that's giving you pain as human beings we're always we can pay top dollar to to go away from whatever pain we're going through but if you've got an anchoring vision if you've got an anchoring goal tough that is goals so big that they actually scare your rational mind the fear would, would not be anywhere near, um, you know, um, where you want to be. So if your vision is to become this big uh, person that is of help to your community, you would now start thinking that you not buying yourself a fancy car today is nothing compared to the amount of help you're going to be to your community. So if you've got visions that are bigger than what your rational mind can be, I think that will dilute whatever fear that you might have, um, you know, in, 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 your, in your mindset. And also, declutter. Influences that come into your head cause you to be afraid. TV, radio, news, newspapers, all of those things are designed to make you afraid and a, a, a fearful nation, according to the media, is an easier nation to actually rule. All right. So they put stuff like that out there to make you feel inadequate. So mind and guard your influences, because the more you don't see the world uh, on fire every single day, the more you see the goodness that the world is, is capable of creating. You're not going to go in with um, with into the battle thinking that um, whatever I'm going to touch is probably going to explode in a bomb or some guy from Bujumbura is going to come and set this place on fire. All right. So your influences, if you put in more motivational stuff, inspirational stuff in your head, guess what happens? You actually start having that as the, the view of your world, because your worldview, if it's tainted by media, media has never put out anything positive out there. And the reason why that is, is so that they can control humanity. And once they can control what you see, what you're afraid of and who you talk to and who you don't talk to, it's easier for them to impose their sanctions and their rules. All right. So if you cut through the clutter of today's noise, you, you, you concentrate on what your ultimate goal is, whatever rational stuff that happens within your brain, because your, your, your logical thinking can never override your emotional feeling. That's why your vision, your values would always be the same, um, no matter what it is that you are told by somebody, um, you know, uh, as a fact or some, some, something new. All right. So you, you have those two minds, which, which if you really, really um, work them against each other, you eliminate fear. And then you start defining what your own reality is. And in your reality, fear does not exist. 
Look at a, a child. If you've got a child, look at this. A child can jump from whatever height. A child can experiment with anything else without fear. But after they go to school, after they start reading, after they start watching TV, all of those influences are put onto them. And then now their, you know, their, their brave mind is sort of um, subdued by, you know, the, the gunk that they're listening to every single day. So you really want to embrace and actually be actively, um, you know, um, watching and, and, and filtering the gunk that goes into your brain because everything is designed to scare you. Everything is designed to scare you. I'll give you a specific example of something that you never thought is designed to make you afraid of life as a whole. Look at this. If you watch Master Chef or any of those reality shows, those shows are designed to intimidate you. The person that is cooking, um, you know, every single uh, time they and they're doing well, they get yelled at, they get shouted at by people that are higher than them. You know why? Because they've just made a simple mistake. Now you look at that and you start questioning yourself, even without thinking, and say, if 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 John Day has been making all these delicious meals and today she's messed up and she's being yelled at. Um, who am I then to think that I can even go any closer to creating anything without the world yelling at me? So you can see all of those things. But if you're working on your blog, if you're working on your content, if you're working on your videos, you don't get any of those influences at all. And that's modern entrepreneurship right there. Eliminate those fears. And let me tell you something. The more, the closer you get to understanding your emotional and your rational brain, you eliminate those fears and it becomes the best thing that you ever created. I hope I answered your question there. And I, <laughs> and also I, I thought I'm, I was educating myself there a little bit because, yeah, there's been a couple of fears I've been going through lately. And um, thank you so much for those that are tuning in right now. Uh, it's It's been fun creating this video and I hope you guys got as much value as I thought um, you know, I was imparting out there. And if you've got any questions, let a brother know. Um, and uh, if you're in Australia, you haven't joined the Australian Business Online Directory, just type in directory um, and then I will uh, definitely be in touch so that you too uh, can be, do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I mean, till tomorrow, until tomorrow, Let's, um, yeah, let's continuously work on what we have. Let's continuously get instant gratification. I mean, not instant gratification. Let's continuously work towards our businesses so that they're profitable and enjoyable and ignore instant gratification. We have a lot of influences. We have a lot of shiny objects coming our way. Just don't forget your mission. Don't forget why you started and you will actually win this race. Um, bye for now. And uh, yeah, hopefully you're having a, 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 a fantastic day ahead of you there.